Welcome to Catholic Truth, your place to know the truth of what Catholics believe and not what people say that we believe. People like Todd Friel from Wretched, who is going to try in this video to debunk Bishop Robert Barron, but instead we debunk him, showing the truth of the Catholic faith and how people constantly, constantly misrepresent the Catholic faith. And you don't have to take my word for it, I'm going to be playing clips from him right after this. <music> As we watch our interview with Phil Johnson, keep in mind the fundamental flaw with this bishop's worldview. We are not good people. In this video, as you're about to see, Robert Barron not once said that we have to be good, or that we can be good, or that good people get to heaven. It's going to astound you that what Bishop Barron said, and what Todd Friel says he said are two wholly and entirely different things. And a three, and a two, and a... Vatican II clearly teaches that someone outside the explicit Christian faith can be saved. Now they're saved through the grace of Christ, indirectly received. Stop. I figured. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this man's understanding of grace and forgiveness and heaven it's sorely wanting, and we have just a much better message. That's it. That is it. <laughs> we don't get to hear what Bishop Barron actually was saying. Our audience out there, wouldn't you have liked to hear what Bishop Barron had to say? Wouldn't you have liked to hear just the message that he was going to say? So you could critique it either way. Wouldn't you li have liked to hear the whole message so you could have a full understanding of it and then put out a proper critique or a proper acceptance? You can't do that if you only come off after a few words. And if, now imagine if I just stopped right there and I didn't keep speaking. How would you know what I'm going to say? You wouldn't because I didn't keep speaking, but yet that's exactly what they did to Bishop Barron. They cut him off and they didn't even let him finish his thought. Now, do you remember the beginning of the video where he says the bishop is sorely lacking and he says, we are not good. Do you remember that part of the beginning of the video? Now, notice what he did not say. He did not say that you can just be good. He did not say that you can just work your way to heaven. He did not say, well, if you don't have Christ, you can just do good works and, you know, be a nice person and then you'll get to heaven. He didn't say any of that, but that's exactly what Mr. Friel is accusing him of. Now, maybe he was going to, even though I know he wasn't, maybe he was going to, but how would we know if he didn't even listen to the whole phrase? You have to hear someone out in order to judge them accurately, and he didn't do that. And if Mr. Friel knew Vatican II, he would know that it doesn't say everyone can go to heaven, or you can just be good to go to heaven, or you just be nice and go to heaven. All the things that he's accusing Bishop Barron and Vatican II of is not actually what Vatican II teaches. So it would behoove him to actually listen to what Bishop Barron has to say, or to pick up a book on Vatican II and see what it has to say itself, rather than presenting a sophomoric, fallacious argument from beginning to end. And Scripture's very clear about that. Romans 10, how shall they hear without a preacher? You know, you, 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 can't, you can't trust Christ if you never heard of Him. And However, let's, let's, let's explore the argument, not of the Roman Catholic Church, but of people who wonder, well, wait a second, the people on Boingo Boingo, they never had a preacher, and you're saying God's going to send them to hell? That's a, that's a fair question to ask. What's the response? It is. Well, we tend to think, you know, the only thing fair is for everybody to get equal treatment. And that isn't necessarily fair. What's fair is to get what you deserve. And we all deserve hell. So if the Lord sent every human being to hell, it wouldn't be unjust for him to do that. He did that with the angels that fell. The angels never had an opportunity for redemption. Nobody died for their sins. They, the angels who fell will pay for their own sins and are paying for their own sins. In this clip, they say that you can't trust Christ unless you've heard of him, which we agree. Now, they digress, and we might ask the question, what if someone has never heard of them? They seem to imply that, oh, well, stinks to be you, you're going to hell. He goes on to say that the angels never got a second chance. But that's because the angels knew God. They had direct vision, beatific vision of God himself. And they knew exactly what they were doing. 
They have superior intellect, superior will. They knew God in his fullness and they still rejected him. This is not a comparable example. You're comparing them to people who have never known God, who have never seen Jesus, and who have never heard of Jesus. It's like sticks and stones, two different things. Two words, Bill Gates. If Bill Gates went to a shopping mall and gave a million dollars to 10 people, nobody would bellyache he should have given a million dollars to everybody at that mall and every other mall. It was simply an act of kindness. Right. However, just the same, let's just dig down a little bit on this. There's some guy on Boingo Boingo, Larry, the, he's the head of the tribe on Boingo Boingo. Larry is a nice man. He has a sense that there's a God out there, sort of, there's something bigger, and he's trying really hard to be good. I, I have to respond to that because that accusation comes up a lot, and that's actually what you're hearing from this bishop. But he doesn't, he doesn't beat his wives. Right. You know, he, he doesn't cut off heads like he used to. Right. So, pretty good guy. Like the mass murderer who uh, gives alms at his church. Uh, it's our motives, our thoughts, our, our everything about us that's corrupt. We try to be good for even self-aggrandizing reasons because we want people to, you know, like us and reward us or whatever. So even the good that we do as unbelievers is Mo motivated wrongly. Yeah. I, I think too it's the perception of what good is. Right. This is rich young ruler territory. Well, you know what? He doesn't like the. He doesn't eat people. Other people on Boingo right. Boingo eat people, and he doesn't eat people. Well, that's good, but that's not good enough because purity and thought, word, deed. That's the standard. Right. Todd Friel makes the example of, well, if I give a million dollars or if Bill Gates gives a million dollars to 10 people at the mall, who are we to fault him that he doesn't give to everyone else? Well, okay, but that's not eternal salvation. He can do whatever he wants with his own money. But the Bible clearly says in John chapter 6 and other verses that God desires for all men to be saved. It doesn't say that Bill Gates desires for every man to have a million dollars, but it does say that it does, God desires for every man to be saved. So if he desires for men to be saved, and if he doesn't give him that revelation somehow, how can he hold that against him? Let's say someone on the top of a mountain in China has never even heard of the name of Jesus, and they had no way to. There's no way they could possibly ever hear of Jesus. If they go to hell, would that be just? Now, I'm not saying they're going to go to heaven. I'm just asking the question, would that be just? And is there a way to live the gospel without knowing the gospel? Remember that Jesus said he wills that all men be saved and not one be lost. So the will of God is for all to be saved, not for some to go to heaven and not for some to go to hell. And we have to remember that Jesus told the people there, if I had not come, you would not have any sin. But because I've come, your sin remains. Meaning you've seen the truth. You've heard the truth. Now you know right and wrong and therefore you are in sin. Whereas before you may not have been culpable because you didn't know the truth. There are many people in this world who do not know the truth and haven't heard the truth of Jesus Christ. So how can they be held accountable for it? Now, he makes the assumption that, oh, well, you just be a good person in that case and you can get to heaven. No, 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 no. That is not what the Catholic Church teaches. Oh, well, you just just try your hardest in that case. No, 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 no. That is not what the Catholic Church teaches. He is lying and slandering the bishop multiple times in this video. In this section, he takes, say, tribal leaders who used to behead people. Oh, but they're not beheading people anymore. And they might know somewhere out there that there could be a higher power. So he's attributing this to the, what the bishop is saying and saying that Catholics teach this kind of theology, which is why he said from the beginning of the video that it's dreadfully wrong. But the Catholic Church doesn't teach this. We don't teach that someone who beheads people and doesn't behead people, oh, are suddenly good enough to get into heaven now. We have taught no such thing. And in fact, the Council of Trent, which Protestants love to rail against, has said that good works done on your own, apart from the grace of Christ, merit you nothing. Nothing done before justification attributes to your salvation. In other words, we cannot earn our way to heaven. We cannot work our way to heaven. We cannot be good enough to get to heaven. This is the official teaching of the Catholic Church. So what Todd Friel is saying is in direct contrast 
to what the Catholic Church actually teaches. Now, there's a big difference between someone who might know there's a <clears throat> higher power and, you know what, doesn't kill people, if we're going to use the ex same extreme example that he uses. But then there's other people who earnestly seek that higher power and want to find that higher power, but they don't know who he is. They haven't received the revelation of Jesus Christ. They're in parts of the world where, the, where Christ can't even be reached. Some parts of China, he's not even allowed in the country in that, those parts. There are Christians there trying to evangelize, but there's so many people around the world that haven't heard the truth of Jesus Christ. We don't get to heaven by being good. We get to heaven by following the commands of Christ. And is it possible that someone follows the commandments of Christ and truly tries to live a moral life? Not like Mr. Friel presents, someone who lives a truly wretched life, but try to tries to do a few good things, you know, or lives a really sinful life or lives a lukewarm life, but, you know, tries to be a little bit good and maybe serve some people at the same time. No. Is there a way, is it possible that someone truly tries to seek God and empties themselves of everything and they try to serve God the best they can and they follow the commandments that God put in their hearts? As Romans 1 says, we can know the Creator just by the law he has written on our hearts. Now, what if people follow that law and they don't behead people, they don't kill, they don't steal, they don't try to do bad things. They actually try to love and serve their neighbor. They, tr they sacrifice their love for service of others. What if they sacrifice themselves for love of others? And what if they give and spend their life giving to others? And what if they follow many of the commandments, like not taking God's name in vain, and trying to honor God, and honoring their parents, not killing, not stealing, not slandering, not lying, not cheating, not doing any of these other things? What if they do live a moral life? Can they get their way to heaven? Of course not. The Catholic Church teaches we can get to heaven only through Jesus. But what if they are living the gospel and what Christ commands without them even knowing it. Now, some people might say, well, Christ commands us to follow him. Okay, but what if they don't have that chance? What if they live the commands of Christ despite that? Is it possible they could go to heaven? The Catholic Church says it's possible that through the grace of Christ working in their life for what they don't know. And notice that's what the bishop said. He said it's the grace of God working in their life. He didn't say it's their own merits. He didn't say it's their own power. He didn't say it's their own deeds. He said great grace could be working in their lives unbeknownst to them because they're trying to follow God the best they can without having the chance to know Christ. So is it possible to be saved? Yes, we don't absolutely absolutely condemn everyone to hell. I know some Protestants love to do that, but in the Catholic Church, we do not do that. Most of us do not do that. And, uh, and we believe that it's possible because God wants all men to be saved. He's going to try to do everything he can to save as many as he can. If we freely reject him, if we don't live for him, if we try to get ourselves to heaven by ourselves, it doesn't work that way. So we agree with Mr. Friel in the sense that you can't just be good to get to heaven. And you just can't you know, rely solely on your own merits. And you can't, oh, well, I'm not beheading anyone anymore. and There might be a God, so I'm, I'll go to heaven. No, that is not what we're saying. And that's not what he's saying. We both agree that that's not going to get anyone to heaven. We both agree that if people are like, oh, well, you know, I don't go to church and I don't pray. You know, I'm a good person, though. I'll get to heaven. We both agree that that person is not going to go to heaven. You have to have Christ. And in rare circumstances, there are people who can't have Christ, who have never heard of Christ and can't hear of Christ or will never hear of Christ. So all Bishop Barron is saying, is it possible that they can be saved? Yes, through the grace of Christ, through his work, working in their life. And of course, this is exceptions to the rule. We see people even in the Old Testament, you had to be part of the covenant in order to be saved, but yet people on the outside sometimes were saved, like Rahab and others who served God and did what God wanted but without really knowing him and without really knowing the covenant and being Jewish or part of that or anything else like that. I mean, she was a harlot for crying out loud, and she's praised in the Bible as doing good for God. <laughs> and there are others, too, who are on the outside, who weren't part of the covenant, who didn't know God, but God worked in their life. Again, this is the exception. God's hands are longer than his church. They're bigger than his covenants. God can reach those people who are truly seeking him. 
thank you all for watching this video today. Please share it with others. Please get the word out there and please like it. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe to our channels for many, many more. And we have tons of videos like this. 10 Reasons I Left the Catholic Church Debunked. 10 Reasons the Catholic Church is Satanic Debunked. 7 Reasons I Left the Catholic Church Debunked. 7 Reasons Roman Catholicism is Wrong Debunked. Reasons I Left the Catholic Church Debunked. I mean, we literally have so many of these videos debunking what people say about Catholics and then what the Catholic Church actually believes. So if that's something you're interested in, check that out. But thank you so much for watching today.